There we go. Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this series of European Universalis 4, where we are playing the beginner-friendly series. This is as Castile, and we are, once again, just like the beginning of the last one, at war. However, this time it is not against the Mamluks. We are instead fighting various Italian factions. It is Naples, myself, and Savoy versus Siena, Bologna, and Provence. The initial battles have very much gone in our favour. Siena is in the process of being occupied. I haven't been, like, massively involved, but our troops are over here. We are fighting. We're getting some uh, experience, getting some army tradition, and just doing our bit. In fact, we have 21% uh, participation already. Sweet. Hopefully that's going to earn us some money. Um, Siena's down. What does Bologna consist of? Is it just one province? Yes. Which you're already sieging. I wonder if we want to try and go for Provence. Although I don't have any artillery, so sieging is going to be... ineffective. <laughs> so I think instead I'm just going to sit here and wait for their counterattack to come in. Because I'm fairly sure it will. Otomi will see it pummet port Otomi. Oh, that's over here. I was thinking, hang on. Is that Japanese? It's not Japanese. All right. New lot of building. Cape Coast is about to finish. But as soon as that one's done, we're going to move into the Gold Coast as well. It's adjacent. It'll go quicker. And that is another center of trade right next door to the Cape Coast. And fortunately, Benin is owned by Benin, so we can't do anything about that one. But we could try to get Calabar. And if we get all three of these, that's going to be a huge amount of control over the trade in this region. If we can get um, Gabu from Mali and Benin from Benin, then we would have complete dominance. But just having those three, I think, is going to be pretty huge. Am I still in a PE with Aragon? No, and I haven't been for a while. Am I going to take any land? Not in this fight. I have no interest in the uh, Italian peninsula. I can get exploration ideas. Was I waiting for something? Yes, we're waiting for Diplo. Okay. Check that none of my forts being attacked. Not at present. And we are blockading. I's port's there. Your port's there. Uh, Siena's already being blockaded by Naples. And I think that's everything. And you're being blockaded by Savoy. Then yes. Colony self-sustaining Carbo. Oh, and Cape Coast. Oh, well then. Let's get you on the Gold Coast, and then I think I might actually just drop a colonist on Calabar as well. I would very much like to be going further around, but I haven't actually discovered any land over here, because I wasn't expecting Carbo to have finished quite so quickly. Uh, we could try to build a slightly bigger South African colony. We could try and get, say, these four. Livestock, grain, fish. Yeah, the Cape Colony isn't massively valuable. The main thing about this is we just wanted to control Carbo for the uh, the trade. Although there is only one outlet, so basically all of the trade would be leaving anyway. Unless one of the African nations took this instead of European. But I would say that's less likely. Alright, that should probably be fine. Oh, this is Ivory Coast as well. Benguela, and it's a high development. It is tropical, but it's not jungle. Interesting. Well, regardless, you're going to the Gold Coast. You're going to have to go to Calabar, which is going to require our transports. Off you go. Okay, then. How's the explorer doing? That's a good question. Are you still explorifying? You are... Still explorifying. Finding a bunch of the Pacific Islands. Whoa, you're actually going a long way out. Oh, yes! Oh, that's like super zoomed out. I was like, hold on, we're almost like found each other. But we haven't really, not yet. Getting there. Getting there. Hey, Mitch, welcome back. I can do some conversions. Yes, I can. And I think I want to. Because we have such high tolerance of the true faith... 
I do kind of want to convert as much as I possibly can. This is going to mean that we're going to have... Oh, we have a level 5 Defender of the Faith in France. Interesting. Uh, slight revolt risk in Carbo while we're doing this. But I think it's probably worthwhile. We'll also need to do the Cape Coast. It's just going to mean a lot more stable trade companies when I convert those two trade companies. Where is Provence's army going? I'm very much hoping that we uh, piece Bologna out for money. And then same thing with uh, Provence. The advantage of the Cape is the bonus merchants that they can give you for all the trade flowing through it and its impact on sending trade further upstream. That's true. Maybe it is worth getting then. Because it would be relatively easy to get pretty much a monopoly there. Okay, Bologna has fallen, so let's go and lift to this siege. This is mountains? No, oh, forest. It looks like Naples is pretty nearby anyway. There goes Bologna. For money. Of which I only got five ducats, but I didn't really contribute anything against Bologna. Against these guys, I would contribute quite a lot more. I guess I'll go and take Toulon, seeing as it's their capital. Unless... Florence gets there first. They won't. Not Florence, uh, Naples. We are taking naval attrition. Yes, we are. Gonna need to sit here and repair for a bit, I suspect. Although we'll be in supply as soon as we hit that. There we go. A deserter resurfaces. Words from our conquistador warned us that one of his trusted lieutenants had defected in despair at the state of the expedition. Our conquistador thought we had seen the last of this deserter, but our agents inform us that he has resurfaced and is peddling his charts to the merchants and the explorers of our rival. <clears throat> so we can stop him discreetly, or we can make a an example out of him. Kill him and make an example. Only Castilians are allowed to sell Castilian secrets. And you forfeited that right as soon as you decided to go against us. You traitor. Oh, Conquistador died. Don't. We'll have to get another one then. Pizarro. And let's see. Subscribers. This is going to be Bacon Killer. Actually, because I know you're watching. Effa, you would be up next, so we'll get you an explorer. There we go. Conquistador Effa, off you go. Find me more gold things. I'm mean, the Gold Coast, Gold Coast. That's here. Okay, we still absolutely smashed the natives. Okay, good to know. Strong military leadership. Our recent wars have given rise to competent leaders, even from the peasant stock. We could prosper from their skills, or we could reject them as they, after all, are not noble. Accepting them may upset factions in our country, though. So Castile needs them all. Nobility loses loyalty, we lose stability. Restrict the non-nobility, we lose a ton of noble uh, army tradition. Or we must be willing to learn even from our lessers. Because we're a martial educator, we would lose less army tradition this way, and I think that's probably the best option. Army tradition is one thing which we're going to not struggle really to build up. In fact, we can have two of you converting at the same time. That sounds like a good idea. You're sieging my stuff. Well, to be fair, I'm sieging your stuff, so there. I think that they've made colonial nations much more likely to get involved in European wars. Never used to see this. Because this isn't the first time that they've appeared and supported us. In fact, that fleet's not going to last for much longer. So we shall continue the blockade here. And Burgos should be able to resist this siege for quite a long time. Stability drop. Queen Consort Regency. Oh man, Hugo Slayer wasn't on the throne for very long. So we've got another 10 years and then smashed. 
will be on the throne. Also means I can't declare any wars, which is annoying, because I was thinking quite seriously about going after Mexico. Sometime soon. Well, it's something for Smash to look forward to. Bulldmaster, thank you very much for the two-month resubscription. Very much appreciate the ongoing support there. Thank you. If I remember correctly, there are different options in how you can treat the natives. Can I explain that further? Yes. I did already go over this in quite a lot of detail in a previous stream. I don't remember if it was the previous one or the one before that. It's whenever I just started colonizing. But to save you going back, I'm not going to go in like full detail about how assimilation and stuff like that works. I'll just kind of go over the the basics. So there are indeed three options that you can choose for your native policy and you can find them here in the stability and expansion tab in the expansion area. Uh, the first one is native coexistence policy. This means that there is no chance that natives will rise up against you. So as you have seen when colonizing I always am leaving a garrison behind. That's because I don't have native coexistence so we've seen native uprisings. They're relatively common uh, particularly in areas that have high native aggressiveness. So areas with lots of um, people and high aggressiveness means that you've got to keep a garrison there. Unless you've got that native coexistence policy, in which case you don't need to bother. You can just keep dropping uh, colonies out and not need to uh, protect them. The second one is the native trading policy. This one does also give you a native uprising chance reduction, though it is only 50%, not 100%. So they are less likely to rise up, but they can still rise up, as we have seen. This is our current policy. Then there's also native assimilation. This is important because the number of natives present in a province when you finish colonizing it will contribute to your goods produced. So, for example... We would gain plus 0 0.72 goods produced in the Ivory Coast when we finish colonizing it because of the 6,000 people present here. We do have native trading policy, so the native assimilation is increased by 50%. So we've got 50% more goods produced gained from the natives being left behind um, when we colonize. So that's incredibly powerful in Africa. A little bit less so in America, though if you just colonize a lot, then you will get some upgrades like here in Guantanamo we're getting 0.12 um, if we went to Kamania we would get 0.18 but in Africa where there are large numbers of tribesmen then you can really get some hefty bonuses like plus 1.08 here in Cameroon that's a huge amount of um, goods produced from that and there are other ways of increasing your native assimilation through events which I think one of them is actually active right now, and through policies. There are several policies that do that too. Likewise with the native coexistence. So if, if even if you have the 50%, there are policies which can give you another 50%, which means you have no chance, then you don't need to garrison, and you still get the benefits of native trading, native trading policy. And that's probably one that we're working towards. The final one is native repression policy. This one means you absolutely have to leave garrisons because there is a high chance that natives will rise up against you, but your colonies will grow more quickly. So if you're a large nation, actually this one's probably good for Castile just because you're trying to get as many colonies out as quickly as possible just to blanket the map your colour. Um, could also be good for somebody like France who has a national idea, has the native uprising reduction, or else France could go for native trading policy. And not need to leave a garrison because 50 plus their 50 is 100%. Um, so if you just want your colonies to grow very, very quickly, then this one's a good option. But it does mean that your colonies won't be quite as good once they are established. And what I mean by them being established is when you have a colonist... Uh, sorry, when you have a... Like, what a colonist or a settler there? Colonist. Uh, present and you're building up the colony, this is a colony. Once this bar has reached the end, so you've got 1,000 settlers uh, present... In this colony it becomes a city it's at that point when it becomes a city that you get the assimilation bonus the other thing you can do is attack the natives which will destroy the native population in that region uh, which can completely remove any uprising chance however you will then lose out on the assimilation bonus bearing in mind though with the um native repression you do still get assimilation um as long as you don't kill them all through the attack natives option, uh, you do still get assimilation with this. It just won't be as much as under the native trading policy. It'll be the same as the native coexistence. So it's basically fast colonies, 
productive colonies or cheap colonies. Can I show where I clicked show all the bonuses? Yeah, absolutely. That is in the government tab. And then here, country modifiers. It's this button here. Press that and you can see all of the modifiers affecting your country. It's a really useful screen. Because it can, like, show you at a glance, for example, our army tradition decay being rather strong. Callan Captain, thank you. Callan Kupt, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Callan Kapt. Uh you're sieging Sienna back again. I don't like that. Unfortunately, there's not a huge amount I can do about it. Uh, well, we're taking out Provence's capital, at which point hopefully Provence will give up. Particularly if we manage to take Avignon as well. So Naples and Savoy are moving back to fight against Siena, and then hopefully they'll fight for the uh, Sienese fort. Doesn't look like they will, though. No, I don't think they are. New trade good. Cartagena is producing tropical wood. That's fine. I actually quite like tropical wood because it reduces the construction cost of buildings. And then there was one province left. Actually, it's two. Aruba is also Caribbean. And there we go. Siege of Toulon has finished. Uh, Naples did send in an army, but it seems like a rather ill-advised army. So instead, we shall go and try and reinforce if we can. That's their navy that's just jumped out. Oh, they actually attacked out. Interesting. Did we capture anything? We captured a light ship. You go and protect trade in Sevilla, and we're going to rename you Sevilla. We'll go and blockade. Actually, you lock and basically head home now. Don't need to blockade anymore. Um, let's leave them in Malaga. What's that? Oh, that was the explorers returning. Excellent. So, next up, we are going to have... I mean, frankly, I need to explore... Probably the Western Indian Ocean. Yeah, get some of these islands uncovered, and then I can put a, a, a colony there, especially as Portugal is coming now. So we are going to go and explore this. It's actually annoying that Portugal's here, because they've probably explored more than I have. Trade protection against Hispaniola. Hispaniola is privateering me? What? That's my colony. Attacked by natives. Tragic news. Our conquistador is dead. Dull. Oh, sorry, Effa. The expedition was traveling upriver by canoe when they encountered the natives. The warlike tribe demanded that they come ashore, and some of the men complied. They were disarmed and stripped naked, something our conquistador objected to. He refused the orders and died riddled with bullets. The expedition member saw his body brought ashore and hacked to pieces. Only one survived who was told to leave and run. The natives pursued him, and he ran for his life, naked, exhausted, and bleeding. The survivor had only one assailant pursuing him after several miles. He managed to overcome the load man and find shelter in Mengonkia. All right, I'll get another one. And this is going to be Bacon Killer. Like so. Carry on exploring. Natives in Cartagena adopt Castellan culture. Good. 
Siege of Burgos is a oh shoot, they actually managed to take it. Well that's unfortunate. And they managed to take that as well. Um, well, I guess we'll have to march back to Burgos and occupy that. I'm going to go ahead and hand these over to Naples as they are the war leader. And I am not interested in this territory. What's my contribution now? Uh, 17%. There goes the Provence army. Mordred, what is best in life? To crush your rivals, see them bankrupt before you, and hear the auctioning of their assets. <laughs> is Naples my ally or my vassal? Ally. I'm allied to Naples, Venice, Portugal, France, and Bavaria. I have no vassals. Oh, Provence is already recovered, but I need to go and retake Burgos first. Although, you're probably going to take too long, aren't you? Let's go and fight you. Ah, uh, it's a long way back. No, let's go and take out Burgos, because these guys are clearly trying to become problematic. And Burgos is actually blocking me from getting back into my own territory. Which is a bit of problematic. I'm actually kind of annoyed they took that, because now they will have done devastation damage to a center of trade. San Jorge is self-sustaining, so that's going to be another colonist. And this colonist is... I mean, I would like them to be over here. Is that a Zanzibar trade of... No oh, it is. Um, well, in that case... Panama can be recalled. And we are going to put a colony right there. Capture that center of trade. And we are also going to need ships from you to go and pick these guys up. Okay. Carbo's being converted. Good stuff. Ah, Carbo's being converted. That means that I can now change Carbo into a trade company. Boom. And Carbo is going to want a marketplace so I can get the most out of that trade company. And then the Cape Coast is going to follow. New technology would be ahead of time, so we'll hold off. There's the Cape Coast. So the Cape Coast now also needs to become a trade company. And we will build a marketplace here as soon as we can. This should be giving us a large amount of control... Um, though not yet. Oh, Castellan, South Africa. There we go. Yes, it has. And this should also be giving us Guinea. Hopefully. We're at 26%, but once we have the local protection as well, um, we should be good. That's exactly 50. Well, that's given us another merchant, which we can use to push some more trade. Fortunately, Alexandria is still out of reach. I already have somebody in the Caribbean. Um, Brazil, possibly. Panama, possibly. 
Hey, Zemolf, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome to Zemolf's viewers. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Did you survive? That is the big question. This War of Minds. Not a game easy to survive. Haven't played it myself, but I have watched a lot of streams and videos. A bit too daunting for me. Um, I think probably Panama. Let's do that. Wonder if Mordred thinks that the Ferengi are Space Dutch. Obviously. You have the lobes for trade. <laughs> These guys are just running completely roughshod. Give me back my fort! Explorer is ready. Haha. <laughs> so this is going to allow me to start colonizing these islands. Uh, Hull Harvai in particularly is going to be important because it's a very nice stop off spot to get to Indonesia. So you need to jump in the ships and then we need to send you over here because we do definitely want to grab that so that we can control Zanzibar. Although Zanzibar is probably going to require some more fighting over. But that's something that can happen a bit later on. No particular hurry to do it right now. It actually did survive. Oh, awesome. Is this VOD on YouTube? I'm guessing you mean this series on YouTube. Not yet, it will be. Um, the thing with... <laughs> the thing with that is I am in the process of editing, well, I need to start editing the first episode in particular because it was quite long-winded. I don't think I even unpaused the game in the first three hours, um, and I don't think that newer players will want to sit and watch a video for three hours with nothing happening, so I need to cut that one down and then put in the rest of the series after that. Um, because that first episode is going to be important because I'm hoping to capture a new audience that's new to this game. And then Richard True, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome to Richard's viewers. Hello, hello, hello. Two raids in seconds. That's awesome. Welcome to all of Richard's and to all of Zemolf's viewers. Hello to you all. Oh, they took Tulum. Ah. <laughs> this war is really annoying. Let me back in my country. Can't believe I let them get Burgos. That humbug. Alright, you guys continue exploring. Now that we've got that, I think we can continue doing the sea. Eastern Indian Ocean, I think, is the next one. At this point, I'm just trying to blitz enough um, exploration so I can get the circumnavigation. Because it's a pretty hefty bonus. Okay, Burgos has been retaken, now you lot are stuck behind my lines. And it's time for you to die. I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me! Huzzah! Unfortunately, you're gonna shattered retreat away from there. Uh-uh-uh. Not letting you escape that easily. And that's a stack wipe. Alright, let's... Go and... Carpet siege all of that. Ah yes, the ships have returned. You guys can mothball, so I don't need to pay you. Thank you, Hispaniola. Killing the remnants of their army. Meanwhile, Siena is now fully occupied, so it's just Provence that we need to knock out. They are on low, so hopefully Naples can piece them out soon. Mulf, thank you very much for the follow. Anilson's heavy tank, thank you very much for the follows. Welcome to the channel. Gold rush! This is really good for us. Our miners have hit a massive deposit of gold. Massive amounts of money are flowing into the treasury. And the reason for that is because I am still... 2,179 ducats in debt, so this is going to be allowing us to pay off a fair chunk of that. The more loans we pay off, the less interest we pay, the faster we pay the rest off. 